Hmm. Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm John, and this is a bootleg Super Baby Vegeta figure from AliExpress. The sculpt actually looks really nice, but the paint job can use some improvements, especially in the face and those red lines in the armor. So let's see if I can fix it. First, we have to make some baby vegetable soup. Ooh, look. All done. Drain the pot. Now let's prep this bad boy. I'm using Tamiya Surface Primer on this um, just so we can get a nice clean coat on it and to make sure that all the paint that I'm using adheres to it. Whenever you're spray painting a figure, make sure you always wear a mask and use some sort of airbrush spray booth to suck away any of the aerosols or just do this outside. When I was painting this figure, it was in the middle of winter and also the middle of the night, so there's no way that I was going to go outside and do this. And now that we're all primed, let's get started with the base coat. Starting off with the torso, I'm using some Vallejo model color black. This is the first time that I'm using Vallejo. Usually I use some sort of cheap hobby store paints and I really recommend it. It has really good coverage. When I was using some cheaper paints, it took me way longer just to do the base coat, but here, it only took me one coat to really just do the entire thing, which was really awesome. Next, for the chest piece and the hair, I mixed together some white and some stonewall gray together for a base coat. Next, going over the armor, I used the yellow color buff as a base coat. And um, when I initially painted it, it looked sort of the right color, but once it dried, it totally became too dark. I decided to go over the entire armor with a coat of gold. I'll call this a little happy accident because in the end I think it looked a lot better. I mean, who doesn't like our own favorite body snatcher with a little extra blink? Next I went over the red sections of his boots and his gloves with a little bit of game color bloody red. Again using Vallejo colors this time around really helped me out. If I was still using some of the cheaper paints, this would have taken me forever. Now to add some highlights to this by dry brushing some white paint onto the raised edges of the thing. This will make the base coat I put on earlier look like shading, especially on those darker parts in the indents of the chest. I also dry brushed some white paint on the hair to add some extra highlights really emphasizing the tips of the hair to give some extra depth. This is the first time I'm using an actual dry brush for this instead of an old paintbrush, so upgrades all around. Going back to the lower torso, I dry brushed a mixture of black and a little bit of stonewall gray together just to give a little highlight to the jumpsuit, whatever this is. Also finishing off the arm pieces here because we really want to show off those guns. The next thing I did was adding the red lines back to his armor. And admittedly, this is the whole reason why I did this repaint in the first place. And I sort of regret it because this was probably the most tedious thing of this entire repaint. The lines are not sculpted well or really well defined at all. So I was just trying to make them as straight as possible. And you can see I messed up there. Um, yeah, this was not fun and it took me a really long time. Moving on to the main attraction. His skin tone is a mixture of grays, skin tones, and reds to give that very pale look. Here for the eyes, I used a mixture of flat blue and black to give the eyes a nice navy look for the base coat. And then we'll go ahead and add a little highlight in there using a mixture of blue and white. Then I went over the little red doohickeys on his forehead and his chin with a little bit of bloody red. I think it's incredibly important to go slow and be patient on these small details, especially on the head and the face. 
How well it's painted really defines the likeness of the character, especially when using these bright colors. Now to add a little bit of extra detail to the line work in his face, I used some Tamiya Brown pen aligner on his ears, mouth, under the eyes, and his eyebrows to really give it that anime look. Lastly, to make sure that the paint job I did is preserved, I added a clear coat to the entire figure. For the jumpsuit, chest piece, and head, I used a matte clear coat because I think a matte finish really gives the figure a more premium look. However, I did use a glossy clear coat on the armor, gloves, and boots to give that gold an extra bit of shine. After gloss coating the gloves and armor, I decided that it needed a little bit more line detail, so I went back and used some brown pen aligner on all the grooves, folds, and stitching on all the boots and gloves. And then I went ahead and cleaned up the line work with some Tamiya X20 enamel thinner. Finally, since I already painted in some of the reflections in his eyes earlier, I felt that the flat clear coat made it look a little funny. So I decided to add a little clear gloss to the eyes to give it a little extra shine. And all that was left to do was to glue the figure back together using some super glue. And here's the final product. I had a great time repainting this one. It's fun to see what a good paint job can do to change a figure especially with a bootleg that actually had a great sculpt. If you liked my work and my video, please leave a like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you next time.